Let's jump right in with a bit of a law drop. I, well, I guess law drop. Uh, we're gonna give her the eyes of the firekeeper. Ashen one, are these? Yes. Are these eyes? Yes. How gracious of thee, Ashen one. The very things we firekeepers have been missing. I don't know why they miss the eyes. Thanks for the eyes thou hast given. But firekeepers are not meant to have eyes. It is forbidden. By who, though? These will reveal through a sliver of light frightful images of betrayal. A world without fire. Ashen One, is this truly thy wish? Yes. Of course not. Please, kill me. And take these eyes away, before I am drawn into the darkness, seduced by the thin light and the awful betrayal. Ashen one, before sed farewell, me. Come yeah, on, come back. Where are you? Where are you, lady? Um, hold on, hold on. She can't just go away like that. Where you at? Oh, thank God. I'm truly sorry, but knowest thou not, I cannot die. So please, Ashen One. Allow me to serve thee. The lords have left their thrones and must to this end. I am ever at thy side. Yeah, let's not give her the eyes. Well, then take... I need to get all my souls up so I can heal the... Oh crap, that's a lot of souls. Help me. That's a lot of souls! Oh god, I need to heal it though. Did I get the key from you? I got the key, right? Oh, you're not there. I presume I have the key, so let's go make sure. Let's go see if I have it. Because we're done with pretty much most of the side areas. I think all of the side areas so far. Yeah, this is all done, so I think... What's next is, I believe... Um, yeah, Dancer, so we can head into the castle. The Lothric Castle. Before we head into the castle, though, we need to check the surroundings a little bit more. Alright. So, this, we're gonna, we're getting close to the end already, which is surprising. Granted, we have two DLCs to go. The DLCs aren't too long, but they're not exactly too short either. Pretty much, pretty much perfect amount of length. Really? I do have the key. Awesome. Oh crap. There we go. Now then. Slowly walk over there. So, I've been um, reading Dr. Stone again because I was I was behind I have 22 volumes but I was only on like volume 10 I haven't read it in like a over a year at this point I think it's been more like two years since I last read any Dr. Stone so I've been catching up on it and I've been I've been grinding through my Dr. Stone uh, so I started on volume 10 I'm now on volume 13 I'm well I'm like 10 pages off from the end of volume 13 so I'm just about to get to volume freaking uh, 14 but Haku has leveled up I really wish she would level up more in fighting ability because she's just so badass but then again I don't really see how she would do that there hasn't been a lot of fighting since the end of the stone wars she did fight one person, 
However, I'm not going to hold that against her since she was wearing a dress, so she couldn't really move how she wants to, how she, how she normally does. Yeah, so she was wearing a weird dress, so she couldn't move. Plus, she didn't have her weapons on her, so she couldn't really fight back. So I'm not going to hold that one against her, but she's leveled up in looks, at the very least. Well, I'd, I'd say looks. Also, presentation more than looks. Which is adorable. Along with that, it is... Oh god, my Senku and Kuhaku pushing has gotten like three times greater. But I've also come to the realisation that it is five times less likely to happen. Because <laughs> friggin' Kuhaku like kissed just above his lips like to cover up that she to make out that she kissed him when really it was just above his lips and he looks so bored <laughs> he looks so goddamn bored so it just made me realize yeah senku's not really probably not gonna go in the direction i want him to with women and um someone else said that as well like someone in the manga said the only thing Senku cares about is rebuilding humanity. He won't even look at girls until that's done. Because this one girl he uses her charms to his ad her advantage, tried to charm him, and he was just not having any of it. He was like, yeah, show me to the good stuff. Show me to, show me to the resources you have. Where's the metals? Show, show me to the weapon I've been looking for. And she was so flawed. And it was amazing. But it has put a dampener on the fact that Kahoku and Senku, probably not going to happen until the very end of the series, like most shonen, unfortunately. God damn, I hate that trope, because I'd, I'd love my romance. Speaking of romance, I see, um, got a, I tried to, well, I've got basically the visual novel dating sim kind of thing to play. But god damn, I am awful at dating sims. Uh... I don't know what to do. I don't know what stats to focus on. I don't know how to get the proper endings. Because I've tried. I've went through it like three times. It's not a long game. It only takes like three, four hours to complete. Well, if you're skipping most of the dialogue. Which I did skip the dialogue the second and third. Well, I think second, third and fourth time. Because I think I played it four times. Because I've already, you know, uh, I watched it through the first time. It was really adorable. It was lovely. I liked it. I do, of course, slowly go through all the scenes I haven't watched, or haven't read. And I just can't seem to get different endings. I've gotten like two endings so far. In fact, I've gotten like, th yeah, I've only got one ending. Technically, I've only got one ending. Well, technically two, but the only thing that changes is one dialogue thing at the end of the game. The thing that really, like, shows you your ending is the flowers you get at the end. Because um, the f flowers I've gotten all four times are um, mixed lilicans, I believe. Which are supposedly meant to represent faraway friends. Which, of course, not the game. Not the goal of a dating sim. You're meant to find a freaking partner. It's just, oh god, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, so I've been trying to get through that. I try to get a different ending. Because... Oh god, it's just... It's so hard! I will say, all the characters are likeable. The main character when you start out isn't likeable. I hated him, in fact. The main character you play as. I hated the dude. Lazy and... Freaking... Rude and just... Oh god. But he grows so much! And it's so nice! It's so nice to see him grow. I think the best thing for me to do would likely be to focus... So, like, there's, like, six activities, essentially, you need to go through. There's, like, so at the very start of the week, you pick an activity to do for the day. There is work, library, running... Flower shop, um, stay at home, and rest. So, the library lets you meet the um, meet and talk to the librarian. The flower shop lets you talk to the 
um, the flower girl there. The running lets you talk to the jogger girl. The staying at home lets you phone um, your ex at home to try to repair the relationship. And resting essentially builds up your health because essentially if you don't if you don't rest enough, then um, on certain days you'll just not go out and do what you planned because you'll just stay home and rest because your health is too low, essentially. So you need to work in rest in order to uh, friggin. You need to work in rest in order to make sure that you can do all of the things you want to do during that week. The work one is just about tending to the garden because it's also a, um, so it's like a farming simulator kind of mixed in with the dating sim, which breaks it up a little bit. It's very relaxing. I will say it's probably a very good comfort game now I think about it. I, I, I was very comfortable playing it yesterday. Granted, I got annoyed getting the same ending four times, but it was it was relaxing. Which I think is why I like romance so much. It's just wholesome. It's just good. There's so much bad crap in the world. That it's just nice to see wholesome, good stuff. That's why I like romance so much. And, well, basically everything. Although, there are not that many options for romance simulators on PlayStation. Which is very annoying. Trust me, I've, I've looked. I've looked a lot. I have, like... Four on my PlayStation, I think. There is also an anime one, um, Data Live. I love Data Live. I haven't seen it in at least two years. I think they're like pretty far ahead. I know it's still going, which I'm v I am happy about because it like reminds me. It makes me nostalgic because I used to love that when I was like 16, freaking 16, 17. I loved Data Live. I do want to play that game. Ah crap, ah crap. My only problem is I'm worried that it won't be as much of a dating sim because, well it will be, but it's not necessarily they choose which one you end up with, more so just flirt with everyone. Because <laughs> if you don't know, Dead Alive, um, essentially the main character has a sealing ability and he has to, so essentially aliens, have come down. They've been coming down for about 30-ish years and whenever they drop down they like wreck a whole lot of stuff. It's basically an earthquake whenever they drop down to earth. It's not like intentional they don't intend for it to happen but they're like unconscious when they drop down to earth and then when they get to earth of course the military goes in to try to suppress them so they get angry go and hurt the military beat them up and so what the main character does is, with his sealing ability, he can seal away their powers so that they don't cause any destruction. And it's for them as well. It's not as if a lot of them don't want to cause destruction, they don't want to like be hunted. Because they're just um, like normal alien people. They don't want to be hunted down by the military. And they don't want to cause like a bunch of earthquakes whenever they come down to Earth. So the main character's job is to um, seal them. But the way he does that is he has to take a place in their heart to fill a void in their heart essentially so essentially he has to romance them and then once he's romanced them he kisses them if if they're romanced enough it seals their powers i think he also absorbs some of their powers so he can technically use some of them but i never got to that point oh crap don't tell are you awake ah oh, crap he's awake he's awake crap Oh, I missed my opportunity. I missed it. I missed it. Drop down. Drop down. Drop down. I messed around too much. I, th I thought I could get a run up. So essentially, if you're fast enough, you can get past both of those dragons before they like do that. Before they, <laughs> before they spew fire at you. There you go. There we go. That's what I wanted. I wanted that fire reaction. You drop a lot more souls and some good embers when you get all turned into darkness. Yeah, so... Essentially, it is a harem manga, hence my... Hence why I loved it when I was 16. 
I have stopped watching a lot of them. Basically all of them. I've, I just get so bored with them at this point. Which is weird since it's only been five years. I'm only like 21. It's weird. Well, th it's not as if I stopped watching them at F16. I still watched them when I was like 18, 19. So not too long ago. But I have stopped watching them as of recent. Not recently, but like the past two years. But I really do want to watch them again. Like, specifically, two specifically. Data Live and Is It Wrong to Pick Up a Girl in a Dungeon. Those are my two favourites. I love both of them so much. And in fact, I'm kind of lying. Because I did watch Chivalry of the Failed Knight, like, last year. Granted, it's not as much of a harem. Since it focuses more on the relationship between the main character and the main girl. Which I do like. It, like, definitely shows that they have feelings for each other. None of them hide. Well, they don't really hide at the end, at the very least. She's very upfront about it in the end when she goes to save him. And it's a doorway. It's one of my favourite um, anime moments. There's like a scene on, of it on TikTok and I have it saved. And it's so wholesome and so amazing. She like hits this dude out of the way who's going to attack him. <laughs> she doesn't even give the dude a second thought. She just smacks him out of the way with a flaming sword. It's like, move it. That's my man over there. <laughs> and I love it so much. I would like the Demon Slayer um, relationship more between Tang and his wives, except he doesn't treat them like wives most of the time. It's more like little sisters, freaking patting them on the head and crap. There is a really good moment where it shows off how much he cares about them when Tanjiro saves um, one of them, and he's like, I am eternally grateful for you. Thank you so much for what you did. Like, I love that moment. That was amazing. It just shows how much he cared about. He cares about them. Like, sh she almost got hit, and he was losing it. He was like, "No." Yeah, so Date Live is fun. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned Don Machi. Don Machi is the shorter name for Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in Dungeon? And I adore Don Machi. I'm pretty sure I've definitely mentioned that. Although I never. I don't think I've ever explained it. So Don Machi is essentially. Do you know the whole trope of guy save girl, girl falls in love with him? Especially in fantasy, when like the overpowered main character gets say uh, saves this helpless girl in dungeon. It's basically the reverse of that. The main character gets saved by this girl, and he he becomes infatuated with her. He had, he loves this woman. Like the moment she saved him, he was head over heels, which is adorable and it's amazing. Because she is like super strong, but she also cares about him. Ah oh, crap, 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 ah oh, crap. Okay, well, it is easier the first time round when there's only one of them. But the second time round, you do have to get through a load of fire. I'm surprised I actually made it. Ow. Are you gonna stop climbing? Come on. Oh crap. I frames. Out. Got down. You guys just keep coming. The last of it. Ah, oh, crap. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yep, yeah, there it is. That's why the dragon's mad. His freaking hand's been infested. I like, I thought these are called abyssal creatures. Oh crap, that's death. That's death. Oh damn. Didn't realize you did that, big guy. Do I have arrows on me? Do I have a bow? Can I shoot you? 
Because <laughs> I really don't want to get near that. Hold on, hold on. Poison arrow is not really what I'm looking for. Moonlight. Ah, crap. None of those are fire. That is not what I was looking for. That is not what I wanted. Goddamn. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Well. Shows, uh, shows what I know. I shouldn't have been just standing there messing around. Yeah, so the main character is infatuated with the Gale. And it's basically a journey about... Look, to put it into perspective... Oh, you don't actually have to kill that thing. It's just the moment you hit it. And it comes out, the dragon, well this dragon at least dies. That one dies as well, but that's because he also has one. And I guess it reacted to this one waking up. Either way. Yeah, so the story is about, he is so infatuated with her that he gains a new skill. And that is, the deeper his conviction towards her, essentially the faster he will get stronger. So the more he wants to improve for her, the faster it will go. So she is... He is basic... He basically has a skill just to get strong enough to stand by her side. That is the whole point of his skill. He wants to be strong enough to stand by her side. And this is also emphasised by one of his um, like friends giving him... Um, not really a lesson, but giving him some advice that um, people will... Well, it's, it's kind of bad advice, considering she's strong and doesn't really need anyone all on her own. But the advice that's given is people like other strong people they can depend on, to put it in nicely. I think she puts in more of a stereotypical um, women like strong dudes kind of thing. But I don't really see it as that, because... Sure, Bell gets strong, but he's just looking at him. He's still very thin, very um, short. He doesn't look powerful at all. But it's more so having someone that can stand by her side, that can be as powerful as her, stand with her. And that is essentially his whole skill. He wants to be able to stand by her side to protect her, to support her. Because he knows how strong she is and he wants to be worthy of her. And it's just... I love it so much. And it's not just him, either. He goes around and he helps people. He helps out um, this old... Not old blacksmith, but a blacksmith with a um, bad history, I suppose. Well, it's not really bad history. It, has, it, it does actually have a really good point. I do love his point. So, essentially, his family are well-renowned. Or at least they were well-renowned for making magical weapons. But... The dude, the blacksmith, despises magical weapons. Because he recognises a problem with them. Is that people rely on them too much. They have magic in them, so when they run out, people are left for dead. If the magic runs out when you don't want it to, you're left defenceless and in the open. And it leads to people dying, and he hates that fact. So he doesn't make magical weapons. And I think it's an amazing story. Along with that, there is also another one, this, like, small thief girl, who becomes, like, Belle's family, and, oh god, it's so adorable. She becomes, like, a little sister to him, from what I remember. And I just want to be clear, like, there are multiple women, so it does have the whole setup for a harem deck, for, an ha like, a harem kind of setup. But the only person that he is interested in at all is Eyes which is the main girl who saved him. He has no eyes for anyone else, essentially. He does recognise, um, like, beauty and stuff, and does get flustered, but he has no interest romantically in anyone but her. Which is something I hate, whereas, like, the main character can't decide between them, or the freaking people that are interested in him. It's like, dude, just pick one! Like, they get so obsessed with choosing the right one, they don't pick anyone. 
Like, there's always obvi the, the obvious main gale option that's always in all of the harem type things. And I feel like Don Machi is set up similar to it, but it avoids it by making it so we are told right from the start, at the very beginning, no one compares to her in his eyes. Which I think is an amazing idea. Because it like shows you that yeah, there are all these other people around that may be interested in him, but it doesn't matter. Like, it's not gonna... He's not gonna be stuck between details of who he wants to be with. There's only one person in his mind, and he's just going to keep fighting until he's worthy of her. I feel like I've rambled on about Don Machi for quite a while. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got re I get I get really into Don Machi. Now I really want to watch it again. Oh god, I need to watch it again. It's been so long. Oh, this is a great bow, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a great bow. Okay, okay. Yeah, I get really into Don Machi when I talk about it, which makes me want to watch it again. Ah, crap. Ah, crap. Ah, crap. No. Bad. Wait, should I? No, that's already open. I already opened it. I already opened it. Oh, that's what the level was for. Whoo, roll away. Roll away. Okay. Yep, so avoid the big guy. Alright. Yeah, so Don Much is awesome. Data Live is awesome from what I can remember, though I, I do want to preface I haven't seen it in ages, so I can't really talk about it that much. The Are you serious? Dude! Dude! This elevator should only be able to hold one! And not one of your size and weight! Ah, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, God. Come on. Okay. Yeah, so Date Live, I can't... I do like it, though. From what I can remember, it was one of my favourites. I do. I did enjoy it a lot. Like, a hell of a lot. So I need to go back and rewatch that. I need to rewatch both of them, honestly. All I can say is the start is just a bit slow. That's my only complaint, and I think that's the only reason why I haven't gone back to watch it in ages. Just that the start is slow. Plus, I also don't like one of the other main characters. So, all of the heroes, essentially, in the show are contracted to a god or goddess. They're all in guilds with said god or goddess. Um... The one that Bell is contracted to is Hestia, and Goddess of the Hearth. Hearth is basically just home, you know, bonfire, wherever you feel at home. And so she she is a very caring person. She loves Bell, and I don't just mean family-wise. So she, of course, gets very jealous over Bell's affections for Eyes, Eines. So of course she doesn't like Belle's affections for eyes, but she d I think she does recognise that Belle needs eyes. She's like, she inspires him so much and he cares for her so much that she does help him grow to such an amazing extent. And Hestia does recognise this, though that doesn't stop her having jealous moments. Now bear in mind, I personally don't mind the jealous characters. I think it's adorable. I think jealousy is a wonderful trait. Granted, depends on the the extremes. Don't go to the extremes with it. Don't stalk people. That's wrong. Do not stalk people, whether it's online or in person. Both are equally wrong and both are, both are equally creepy. But I think just a little bit of jealousy is fine. It just shows how much you care. Granted, there is the whole bit about if you're in a stable relationship and um, you shouldn't need to worry about people going out or do, um, 
hanging out with friends, which is right. It is right. You should feel confident in the one you're um, with. Do not get that twisted. If someone wants to go out with their friends, let them. It's fine. But if someone's like openly flirting with them, well, what, what then? then? Then you can be a bit jealous. Plus, I don't think it's... So, with the whole jealous thing, it is bad to take it too far, stalking and stuff. But at the same time, I do understand the worry of her letting your partner go out more so than the jealous side of it. So the worry would be that something bad ca could happen to them. That part I understand because I worry. I worry about a lot of stuff so I couldn't even imagine worrying about someone else that you care about deeply. Like if you care about them deeply enough like is like another part of you then of course you're going to worry. So I think that's perfectly normal but you also have to let them do their own thing. They are their own person. You can't control them, that's just wrong. It's rude. Humans are defined by the free will, essentially. So you let you've gotta let people have free will. But besides my personal affection for a little bit of jealousy, I don't like it in Hestia. I think it's just because of how much I like Eyes and Bell's relationship that I don't care for Hestia's jealousy. But I also think that's just unreasonable. Hers is pushed to the extreme a lot. Plus, it's made worse by the fact that she very much knows she can't be with Bell. So there's rules that a goddess can't be with a mortal. I think, well, there's two sides. It's either a mortal or it's a model you're contracted with. A guild mate, essentially. It's one of those two. Either way, she can't be with Bell since he is her guild mate. But I think what makes it worse and what makes it kind of sad is that Bell is the only guild mate in the Hestia um, coven, essentially. I can't remember the specific name of it. Familiar. He is the only one in the Hestia Familiar. And he does care for her so much as like a goddess, as like, not a mother figure, but like a friend, a mentor, someone he cares for deeply. She is his god and he loves taking care of her and loves making her happy. But it's a family thing for him. Whereas for her, her affections are only spurred on more by the fact that he's the only one there she is the only one he can rely on and he t she he, he is reliable despite being weak at the start of the story he does whatever he can to support her and it's beautiful but it's beautiful in the family sense not in a romantic one which is where Ainz and Hestia differ whilst he does his best for Hestia as he currently is. For Ainz, he wants to improve. He wants to be better than he currently is. Which I think is what makes it so powerful. Is that he's not just doing the best he can. He's improving to be better than he can. Better than he is. Better than he was. Better than he ever has been. Just to be worthy of her. And it's not as if she's holding it over his head. Like, oh, you're nowhere near my level come back when you're stronger and then maybe I'll think about it. No, it's nothing like that. She's nothing like that. She's very gentle, very slow. She can seem very out of it, dazed if you will. If you've seen Demon Slayer and you've seen Michiro, um, even if you've just seen like season one where they show the Hashira and he's like looking up at the clouds, she essentially has his kind of <laughs> her look where she's basically just dazing off a lot of the time. Well, she looks like she's dazed enough. She's very blank-faced, but when it comes to Belle, in the later seasons, she's very much interested in pretty much anything that involves him. Whenever he comes up, she does get very interested. She gets very intrigued. And it just shows that he has had a massive effect on her. Like, she is thinking about him quite a bit. And even if she isn't, if he's brought up, she's then thinking about him. She seems very dazed and bored with most things, but whenever he comes um, into the topic, 
she does get very, very interested in whatever they're talking about. And it's not just them meeting them one time. He does see her quite a few times. He meets up with her a lot. And in the later season, he does start training with her. And that's a wonderful bonding for the both of them. And I can't quite remember, but I believe there's a scene where either Belle is asleep or she is asleep and the other one leads in towards the lips. Nothing happens, but it's like close to thinking about it before pulling away. I think I would prefer it if it was Ainz is the one that leaned in while Belle was asleep, but I can't quite remember, so I can't comment on it. Oh god, I need to watch Don Marchi again. I really do. It's such a good series. I think something that puts people off typically is the name. Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Because there is no doubt that is a weird name. <laughs> like when I first, I can still remember when I first saw it, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what kind of dungeon are we talk about? This does not sound right. It does not sound like it should be aired. But no, no, it's it's wonderful. It's a fantasy dungeon, and it's one of my favorite stories. Even though I haven't caught up with it in quite a while. The last thing I remember was a guild war. What well, a familiar war, I guess. Between the Hestia Coven, the Hestia Guild, and the guild that has a contract with the short thief, uh, thief guild. So despite, despite her connection with um, Belle, and despite the fact that she is essentially a little sister to him. She is part of a different familiar. And the whole guild war is about them trying to convince them to give her... Them trying to convince her guild to give her up and to give her to the Hestia familiar. Because essentially the, the other guild she's part of freaking like uses her to like smuggle crap. And she gets like beat up a lot. Which is awful. But I don't think she gets beat up after Belle turns up. Because she's like beat up at the start of the story when she's like stealing stuff and has to give it to them. She's like being extorted. But I think once Belle turns up and he like deals with the problem, she stops getting beat up. But she is still part of the um, familiar, so they have to... They want to get her out of it, of course. So, she, so that she can be a part of Hestia's familiar. I think... I think the god of that familiar that she's a part of is a decent dude. Although I think I'm misremembering because now I think about it, I think there are some creepy scenes with him. Although it could just be a different dude who's like running the place in the god's stead. Because I think he just stays locked. Yeah, I think it is that. So I think the god stays up locked in his room, like doing experiments and stuff, like potions and that. He's trying to do alchemy, I think. And the dude who's basically leading the guild is awful and he extorts people with crap. And the actual, like, god doesn't take much notice because he's not interested. And that's the last thing I remember anyway. Oh, wait, was it? It's it's hard to remember. I know that they, the Hestia Coven wins, of course. The Hestia Family wins. And they move into this giant mansion. And they get the guild back. But that is the very last thing I remember. They move into the giant mansion and they get the girl back. I can't remember anything else besides that. Hence my desire to watch it again. Because I think they're on like season 4, part 2. Which I'm not happy about. Go in the whole, um... <laughs> go in the... What's it called? Attack on Titan route. Anyway, I've been rambling on... God, long goddamn time. I need to end things. Sorry this episode was all about freaking harem anime, essentially. But I, I'm very passionate about Don Machi. I, I adore her a lot. Either way, I will leave things there. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. I'll see you all later when we get to fight this thing. So I'll see you there. Um, Hope you all enjoyed and goodbye.